Have you ever wondered what happened to the African-American family that changed TV representation forever? The Cosby Show aired on 20 September 1984 and ended on the 30th of April 1992. So it's been over three decades since the show ended and a lot has changed with the cast of our once and always favorite black TV family. Let's take a look at how the lives of these stars we hold dear have changed in the past couple of years. Let's start with the star of the show, Dr. Heathcliff played by, you got it, Bill Cosby himself. Back in the 80s when the show started, Bill was a darling of black entertainment television. He was born in the late 30s and he always had a funny side to him. In fact, in high school, he had a reputation for joking around instead of focusing on his studies. When he transferred schools, he was so unserious that he failed the 10th grade. The golden age comedy career we know him for didn't begin until he was 24 years old, after returning from military service. It all started at Temple University, where Bill had gotten a S scholarship for track and field. As a broke college student, he needed a way to make a little extra to support himself, so he started bartending at the Philadelphia Club. He noticed that he got way better tips if he managed to make the customers laugh. This put the idea into his head to try out for stand-up comedy. He soon discovered that he had a natural talent for it and dropped out of university and quit his bartending job to pursue a career in comedy. From there, he climbed up the social ladder by being one of the few comedians of his time that was actually family-friendly. He loved to joke about his childhood and teenage years while ultimately avoiding using vulgar language or discussing explicit topics. In 1965, he became the first African-American in a weekly dramatic television series to have a starring role. The show won him three consecutive Emmy Awards for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series. Things were about to get even better, though, because he was about to create the show that would change African-American representation on weekly television forever. After years of experience creating successful shows in Hollywood that centered black characters, on September of 1989, Bill wrote up the draft for a new show, The Cosby Show. He would produce, co-write, and star in the show as the main character, Dr. Heathcliff. As an advocate for family-oriented comedy, he played the character as a caring but somewhat arrogant, loving father figure. The show had actual parallels to his own family life in it. The show was an immediate success and debuted at the top of the ratings chart for the vast majority of its eight-season run. Bill became known as America's Dad, and the show was revered for having some of the most positive representations of a contemporary middle-class African-American family on television. Bill's career was on the up and up with no signs of stopping, but he would soon be stripped of the title of America's dad. 2014 was the year Bill Cosby's entire career in the entertainment industry died. He was slated to produce a special with Netflix that would come out later that year, and for the most part, his career was doing well, even at his age. Behind the scenes, a boiling pot of controversy was set to spill over when comedian Hannibal Buress did a stand-up comedy set that stood as a public reminder of all the allegations brought against Bill for sexual harassment and assault that had been ignored or swept under the rug for decades. In his set, he encouraged the women to come forward, and they did. By the end, more than 60 separate women brought forth allegations of assault, battery, harassment, and even a case of drug-facilitated assault. One of the plaintiffs was 16 years old when the alleged assault took place. The entire case included allegations that for over five decades, Bill displayed a pattern of abusing his power to take advantage of women. The Netflix show was canceled and reruns of The Cosby Show were put on pause by all networks. Throughout this process, Bill maintained his innocence and denied all the allegations. In 2015, some of the court documents from his case were made public, and the transcript included Bill admitting under oath that he would use sedative drugs during his interactions with women and admitted that his possession and use of these drugs on women was illegal. 
Bill's career was never the same and he never returned to entertainment besides interviews he would do after returning from his sentencing. In the most recent news about his whereabouts, he planned to return to comedy in 2023 but ultimately decided against it. Instead, he's been living at home with his wife, Camille Cosby. He was 47 during the show and is now 86 years old. Find out where all your favorite Black Hollywood stars have been hiding by clicking the subscribe button and notification bell. The character of Claire was directly based on Camille Cosby, an ambitious family woman working hard to support her family and love her job. Felicia Rashad was born into an educated background. Her mother was a Pulitzer Prize-nominated writer, and her father was an orthodontist. This gave her life experience to play the exact class of people in The Cosby Show because she came from that background herself. By the time she started out acting professionally, she had studied arts at Howard University and graduated magna cum laude. If there was any fit to play an affluent, graceful lawyer with that 80s career gal flair, it was her. Eleven as talented as she was, she didn't jump right into fame when she started acting. She spent the first decade of her acting career on Broadway shows like Dreamgirls and Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death. She even briefly had a music career. She released an album in 1978 called Josephine Superstar. In 1982, Felicia's character was intended to be a plumber and even once envisioned as a Dominican housewife. Bill noticed her in her recurring role as Courtney Wright in One Life to Live and immediately decided that she should be cast for the role. It was Camille Cosby who convinced Bill to make the character an attorney instead so that it better reflected his own life and family. Claire's character holds the entire family together. When Cliff's goofiness gets in the way, she was one of the first African-American female characters on weekly television to be written as a hard-working career woman with feminist principles who kept her family together with an iron fist. She's one of the first American TV occurrences of the do-it-all trope in maternal characters in family TV dramas. In one episode, she helps Theo get a refund for some silly t-shirts he bought. Compared to Cliff, she was more straight-laced and more disciplined, but as the seasons progressed, the writing of her character lightened up a bit more to help her blend with the feel of the show. When the show ended in 1992, Felicia's career and ambitions continued to grow at an exponential trajectory. During the run of The Cosby Show, she won a People's Choice Award and NAACP Award for Outstanding Actress in a Comedy Show. When she returned for a role in Cosby, she was awarded another NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Actress in a Comedy Series. She took a nearly decade-long break from film acting while doing small roles in TV. She was working more on her Broadway performances and productions. In 2004, she became the first black female of any nationality to ever win a Tony Award for Best Performance by a leading actress in a play for her role in A Raisin in the Sun. After this, she dedicated herself to doing some charity work, and in 2010, she was dubbed the Mother of the Black Community at the NLAACP Awards. In 2014, she expressed her feelings that Bill Cosby was completely innocent and his conviction would be a miscarriage of the justice system as she has been friends with Bill since the start of the show. In recent years, she's won another Tony Award for her role in the 2022 play, Skeleton Crew. That same year, her performance also won her a Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Actress in a Play. Her career is showing no signs of stopping or slowing down, and in 2024, she's set to play Vonda in the main cast of the series, Daria from Detroit. She was 36 when she first got started with the show, and she is now 75 years old. Every family sitcom needs its Bart Simpson, and Theo showed up to fill the shoes for the role. Malcolm was raised by his single mother after she divorced his dad. As soon as he expressed a small smidge of interest in show business, his mom enrolled him in acting schools and got him an acting coach. 
For the majority of his younger years from 9 to 18, his mom was his manager, and she would find him all the acting gigs to audition for and get roles in. He graduated high school at the Professional Children's School in New York. When his mom was looking for auditions, she noticed a poster for a nationwide search for the cast for the new Cosby show, and she got excited to audition him. Only there was one small problem. She only found out when it was the last day of auditions. She rushed him to the auditions and stood in line with him to try out. After his audition, even though most of the casting directors felt lukewarm, Malcolm was chosen by Bill Cosby himself on the very last day to play Theo Huxtable on the show. To this day, it is the most popular role of his career. He played the family rebel perfectly, and whatever hijinks he would come up with next was something to look out for in each episode. If the family life was ever out of something to complain about, Theo was there to generously give them a reason. But he was still the lovable goof of the family, despite his elaborate rebellious streak, and his character matured as the show went on, along with the actor himself. After The Cosby Show, he continued on his TV show streak, with the help of his mother and later a real agent. Over the years, he's done a few film appearances in mostly small roles. His career in TV, however, is busy and booming. Even while he was working on The Cosby Show, his mom was signing him up to make appearances on other shows. He was in the main cast of Jeremiah as Curdy Malloy for two years and made dozens of small appearances in TV shows in the years following. He played Andre Bennett in Community, and this role brought him back into popular culture after a while of being out of it. His most recent TV role was Amir in four episodes of 911. Warner was 14 during the show and is now 52 years old. The Cosby Show made Keisha the youngest actress to ever be nominated for an Emmy Award. She started acting when she was just three years old under the guidance of her parents. By just three, she had a consistent role on Sesame Street. She actually made her professional debut at nine months old in a baby products ad. The character Rudy was intended to be a boy, and the role was set to be given to Jaleel White. However, they made a last-minute decision to open the audition up to girls, too, and Keisha just about blew them away with her talent. She was exactly what they needed for the show. At first, Bill protested that young girls would be impossible to work with and disrupt the show, saying, We'll be shooting for the rest of our lives if we have a little kid. But Keisha was always fairly quiet and memorized her lines in a flash. The character was immediately rewritten as a girl. In 1986, at just six years old, she was nominated for an Emmy as Best Actress in a comedy show. She started out as a character who existed only for their cuteness factor and later became a character resembling the same teenage girl struggles as her older sister. When the show ended, Keisha's family moved to Virginia and for the most part, she continued to have a normal childhood. She made a return to TV and film over the years, but they've been sparse compared to how busy she was as a child, only doing up to five roles in a decade. In her last TV role, she hosted Married at First Sight in 2022. In her last film role, she played Bethany in The Hillsdale Adoption Scam, a small-scale TV movie in 2023. She is now 45 years old. Tempest was just 11 years old when she played Vanessa Huxtable on The Cosby Show. It was actually her first ever television appearance and first time acting. A lot of the character she played was based on herself. They allowed her to figure out some aspects of the character herself since she was around the same age as the character she was playing. Vanessa's story was meant to follow along with the typical teenage girl's sensibilities and life problems. Her plots often included heartbreaks, growing pains, and academic conflicts. She was an excellent student and had a pretty nosy personality in her family dynamic. But she was also the character that the show was probably the hardest on, despite her being excellent in every other aspect. Tempest grew up alongside the character and developed in a similar way in her personal life. 
she took on the character of Vanessa as she grew up, at least all of Vanessa's positive traits. Even with her acting career, she remained a diligent student because her parents still wanted her to have something to fall back on outside of her acting career. This would turn out to be a pretty smart decision on their part. After the show, Tempest went to New York University to study finance, which has been her primary occupation since graduation. As a result, a lot of her film and TV roles have slowed down to almost a halt, with her last film or TV appearance being in 2019. This appearance was a small role as the character Katrina in Family Reunion, and her last film role the year prior was Jackie in the Christmas movie Jingle Bell. Her longest running role since the end of The Cosby Show was when she hosted The Tempest Bledsoe Show for a year and when she hosted 12 episodes of Clean House in 2010. Tempest is now 50 years old. Sabrina LeBeouf as Sandra Huxtable. Did you know that Sabrina got the role that Whitney Houston was supposed to get? Sabrina was 26 when she started on the show. Her family only moved to L.A. to escape segregation in Louisiana where she was born. Even as a little girl, she already knew she had a passion for acting. She was in all the school plays and drama clubs she could. She developed a lot of talent from all that practice, and she was in a lot of leadership positions in her high school. She decided that she would go to college to pursue acting professionally and was accepted into UCLA to get a degree in theater. But even a prestigious university like UCLA wouldn't give her many opportunities as an African-American actress, and she became pretty pessimistic about the industry. But she kept going anyway, and in 1980, she studied to get a master's in theater at the Yale School of Drama. Two years later, she was standing in the same line as Whitney Houston to audition for the older sister of the Huxtable family. How did she bag the role? At first, the casting team didn't really want Sabrina, despite her perfect audition and talent because she was 26 after all. She was much older than the rest of the children in the cast, and she would be set to be older than the character she was meant to play. They also figured they had Whitney Houston anyway. But Whitney decided to reject the offer for the role because the contract for The Cosby Show had some unconventionally invasive rules for her. If she took the part, she wouldn't be able to continue with her music career normally because they thought it would interfere with the believability of the show. So Sabrina got the role instead. She played the heck out of it too. In 1989, she won the award for Best Young Actress in a comedy series for her role as Sandra in The Cosby Show. Sabrina has one of the most abrupt career endings of any of the other family members. After her role in The Cosby Show, she never managed to find consistent casting in any other TV show besides voicing a character in Fatherhood from 2004 to 2005. Her last role was in The Stalker Within, in 2009. She is now 66 years old. The character Denise gets her free spirit from the actor behind her, Lisa Bonet. She got her start doing beauty pageants and making small appearances in various shows. Since Lisa was raised by her single mother, her mom was responsible for getting her to all of these shows and signing her up to shoot for ads and do some modeling as a kid. At 17, she auditioned for and got the role of Denise Huxtable. It was her first widespread big role and it gained her tons of popularity. Her free-spirited character was a fan favorite. So much of a favorite that the 90s college life spin-off, A Different World, was completely based on her transition to adulthood as a character. During the run of the show, she earned a nomination for a Primetime Emmy Award for Best Supporting Actress. But her run on the show just wasn't as smooth as the others. She started working on A Different World and The Cosby Show simultaneously. But after just the first season of A Different World, she announced that she was pregnant. That meant they would either have to write her pregnancy into the show or let the character go. Bonet decided to leave the show herself. After a while, she returned to The Cosby Show only to get fired for what the producers called creative differences. Although she didn't leave as gracefully as other cast members, people still loved her character and remembered her fondly. 
In the years since, Lisa has done a few shows and films, but mostly stopped acting in the mid-2010s to focus on her family. Click on this next video and catch up with the lives of Black Hollywood stars from your most nostalgic memories. What show do you want us to catch you up on next? Comment down below and it may be the next video.